Good evening, I'm your host, Jack Remington, the Jack Remington Political Analyst Channel. I'll let the videos do the talking. Enjoy. Has a lot of popularity. If he runs again in 2024, will you support him? Yes. If he decides that he's going to run, would that preclude any sort of run that you would possibly make yourself? I would not run if President Trump ran. Proceed. Senator Rand Paul teased us with his endorsement for 2024, and so far, he says, it's anyone but Nikki Haley. I've had a long res relationship with Donald Trump, and there's a lot to like there. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the fiscal conservatism of Ron DeSantis. I think Vivek Ramaswamy has been a, an important voice. Also have listened to and met with the independent Bobby Kennedy. I'm not yet ready to make a decision, but I am ready to make a decision on someone who I cannot support. So I'm announcing this morning that I'm Never Nikki. And if you go to nevernikki.net, you can let her know that you're not a supporter either. I don't think any informed or knowledgeable libertarian or conservative should support Nikki Haley. I've seen her attitude towards our, invent, our interventions overseas. I've seen her involvement in the military industrial complex, $8 million being paid to become part of the team. But I've also seen her indicate that she thinks you should be registered to use the internet, that people posting ideas anonymously. I think she fails to understand that our republic was founded upon people like Ben Franklin, Sam Adams, Madison, John Jay, and others who posted routinely for fear of the government. They posted routinely anonymously. And I think her failure to really understand that or to think that you should register through the government somehow for the internet is something that should disqualify her in the minds of all libertarian-leaning libertarian, libertarian conservatives. So I'm announcing today I'm never Nikki. You can go. Never Nikki. I don't know. Maybe you can call us that too, Jessica. We've been very critical of her candidacy on this show and for good reason. As he mentions, the fact that she wants to get rid of anonymous social media users one of the arguments against that that he didn't mention in regards to the Founding Fathers, yes, they were scared of government, but one of the other reasons that they decided to post anonymously, gosh, I say posts like they were writing blog posts or tweets, but um, one of the reasons they decided to author um, the Federalist Papers anonymously is that they wanted the strength of the arguments to stand on their own rather than being attached to an individual, um, which I think is one of the benefits that we have with the, with the internet. Um, sure, it breeds all kinds of bad ideas, sometimes even extremism, but the beauty of it is that you are able to get access to ideas that maybe you would have not been able to otherwise or ideas that might be reflexively rejected by the establishment or by the regime because they come from the wrong people. So there's tons of benefits to posting anonymously. And the fact that Nikki Haley even floated that idea throughout her campaign is very disturbing. She has since, by the way, insulted Iowa voters on separate occasions. Um, the first moment she claimed that New Hampshire is there to correct the vote that happens at the Iowa caucus, and then in trying to clean up those remarks, said that she has to change personalities when going from Iowa to New Hampshire to South Carolina. So she's a very inauthentic individual. She's a neoconservative, which Republicans uh, are, are massively rejecting since the rise of Donald Trump. And uh, Rand Paul is obviously a, a libertarian uh, leaning conservative. And so it makes sense that he would come out against Nikki Haley. If anything, I'm surprised that he didn't do it sooner. Bird brain loves mass asylum. There's nothing nice about her. There's no I will never run against President Trump. He is a great president, the greatest president in my lifetime, which is actually quite a bit now. The greatest president in my lifetime, she said. I will never run against him. Then she comes over to see me at Mar-a-Lago. Sir, I will never run against you. She brought her husband. Where's her husband? Oh, he's away. He's away. Where, what happened to her husband? What happened to her husband? Where is he? He's gone. Have you taken the prospect, the possibility of endorsing him off the table at this point? It's not anything I think about. What I have but said is- But is it off the table, Ambassador? It sounds like you are in a different place. Are people misinterpreting what you're saying? Have you moved to a place where you're no longer planning to endorse him? Well, I think, first of all, you're, if you talk about an endorsement, you're talking about a loss. I don't think like that. When you're in a race, you don't think about losing. You think about continuing to go forward. What I can tell you is I don't think Donald Trump or Joe Biden should be president. 
I don't think that we need two candidates in their 80s. I don't think we want a Joe Biden who calls his opponents fascists or a Donald Trump who calls his opponents vermin. No one wants that. I think people want a new generational leader that is going to go back to what the American dream is, what we want for our kids in a place that's something that we can be proud of again. Let me try it this way. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I, the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking about. And this is your reminder that if you won't vote Democrat, Democrats will flood the country with people who will. Obama spied on Trump and his campaign. One. Okay, Hillary and the DNC, fake Russian collusion hoax. Two. They impeached him twice. Three. They indicted four. him four times, Five. arrested him four times, 91 criminal charges. None of that worked. So then, Okay, then all these states tried to disqualify him from their ballots. That just failed, 9-0, okay? And now you have people like Colorado Democrats, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. She goes, it will be up to the American voters to save our democracy. Remember I said that about a couple months ago? You're going to keep hearing that now that, that, that it's election year. And then Keith Olbermann, Pat, I don't know if you saw this guy. Rob, can you show the history? He, you want to talk about Trump derangement syndrome? And I think yeah, he's, that there should be a home. The Adam, the they, there should be a, 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 a new practice that, like for psychiatrists that just deal with Trump derangement syndrome we could have like a maybe value tame it could start what do you it. mean that's how i got cured buddy uh, well that, that's what i'm yeah. talking about so he's malfunctioning so bad look at this thing he goes the supreme court has betrayed democracy its members including jackson but well, he's turning on, on his own people and sotomayor have proved themselves inept this is the su supreme right. court to read in comprehension and collectively the court has shown itself to be corrupt mm -hmm. and illegitimate it must be dissolved he's calling for the dissolution hold on he wants to dissolve the Supreme Court. Okay, yeah. this is what he's talking about. Because they wouldn't do what he wants. Yeah, because he's a scumbag. And then Hillary Clinton, Rob, I sent you that clip of her on Instagram. I love it. Anytime something like this happens, they always have to go to the Hillary. Look at Hillary Clinton's uh, attitude on. About the opinion, which I haven't had a chance to read and study. Um, I'm not surprised <clears throat> that this court would make that decision. And I'm not surprised that ultimately it's up to the American people to prevent him from ever getting near the Oval Office again. And that's what we have to do. Meaning so, actual election. What, 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 are you ready for this? this? This is coming from the woman that started the entire fake Russian collusion that people still are talking about today. So here's my question, Tom. I want to ask you, too. Like, now what? The establishment is running out of options, okay? They either have to, you know, let the vote happen, which they'll probably do something with mail-in ballots or some weird thing, or... They're going to have to, like, killing him, killing Trump, is, it has to be on the table. And this is where I came up with this story I found yesterday, uh, Pat. This story came out yesterday on the same day that they ruled on this. The FBI, Rob, you have this one? The FBI in Miami has launched an urgent manhunt for Iranian secret agent Ma Majid Destani Fadahani. I said that with the Persian slang. He's accused of plotting to assassinate Trump-era officials, including Mon Mike Pompeo and the revenge killing for Iranian General Hossein Soleimani. Uh, so according to leaked U.S. intelligence, it is alleged that the terrorist leaders are seeking to revenge for the killing of Soleimani, and they have made life-threatening threats to Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, and General Kenneth McKenzie. Maybe that's one of the reasons that they're leaving the border wide open, because it's votes. OK, it's potentially bringing in these soldiers for cyber attacks. And let's just say let's just say this guy's mission is to go and knock out Trump. Anything. Listen, mm -hmm. anything is on the table with these people. I, I'll, I trust the government. Zero. And I know a lot of people out there like, oh, Vinny's this crazy conspiracy. No, 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 no. These people are here. It's out in the open and they're not even hiding anymore. Their goal is to get rid of this guy, because if you think about it, what do they want at the end of the day? Civil war, push us to civil war, have the military come in and take our guns, and it's game over. I think it's Why did I make this video? Well, I'm going to archive it, number one. Most of my videos, I just delete them because the space is so hard on my hard drives. I'm saving this one. I want the world to remember and never forget how bad this Nikki Haley is. She doesn't mind if these people sneak across the border, do harm to his former president, Donald Trump. And she thinks that if he's out of the way that way, She's an automatic nominee, which that actually technically would be the case. Remember this. 
that's a real possibility. Why? How do you know that if they get caught at the border and there's one, two, or three, or four of these clowns, hey, we hit Trump too, go, go get them. And they let them sneak through. Don't count that out. Don't rule that out. You may not ever hear anything happening until after the fact. But how do you know that's not going to happen if it hasn't happened already? Why do 13 people all of a sudden come out and oppose a, a clear front runner like Donald Trump? And Nimrod Haley, Ron DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy, they didn't stop their campaign. They suspended their campaign. That's a big difference. The expenses are still coming in. they got to use pocket money or more donors to fund people who send still so many bills to them. You know, gas reimbursements, whatever, uh, renting town halls, security detail. There's still money that they got to pay unless they dissolve the campaign. And I don't want to get into that here. What I'm here to tell you is that I want the world to remember that this Nikki Haley, she wants power so bad. And remember, when Donald Trump was president-elect from 2016 to January 20th of 2017, he picked Nikki Haley first as a candidate for Secretary of State, the job that Mitt Romney wanted. And Mitt Romney was bootlicking Donald Trump, oh, please hire me. And he went for three times to meet with him, like, because they please don't hire this guy. And he didn't. He hired Rex Tillerson, who also stabbed Trump in the back. Okay. Donald Trump gets criticized heavily for his choices for his cabinet positions and, and other administrative agencies and other government positions. Well, he doesn't have much to work with. A lot of the really good people don't want to, didn't want to work with Donald Trump because they were afraid of the backlash afterwards. You know, they, they knew that they were probably going to get four years out of it, and what are they going to do? They have to go get another job. They would love to have gotten the eight straight years, and they can park from it and move maneuver from there. But this is not about the swamp creatures. Although Nikki Haley is a swamp creature. Look at the money she's getting from these 13 donors. If I can remember, I put a screenshot up here of the big shot donors that helped this campaign. Because they don't want Donald Trump. He appointed Nikki Haley at a complete obscurity. No one cares who the governor of South Carolina is other than that area of the country. I'm not dissing South Carolina or Rhode Island or Hawaii or anything like that. There's mega states and then there's the average states. Okay, South Carolina is an average state. I not know that much about her until Donald Trump appointed her ambassador to the United Nations. That's a big job. Okay, And that was probably the better job of Secretary of State, in my opinion. And so she was astute enough to take that job. I got people telling me she was okay. But I do remember a couple of times she stabbed Trump in the back back then, and she was setting policy, and Trump had to re-steer her to the direction that he decides. He's the elected official. The President of the United States decides a lot of these decisions, if not all of them. They're helping him out. They're gathering information so he can make the decision. But Nikki Haley wants power so bad, and she's bad-mouthing Trump, to, to, uh, she's destroying Trump, and, and she says some horrible that are not true about Donald Trump. The media is applauding her, hey, look at this Nikki Haley, you know. When Donald Trump punches back, hey, where's Nikki Haley's husband? Oh, how dare he? You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a big deal. They strike him first, and he punches back pretty hard, and they don't like that. Trump fights back. Well, I like a fighter. You know Trump's got my vote now and forever, to the end of time. Unless he gets something really, really bad, that's not gonna happen, okay? I want the world to remember that this Nikki Haley is terrible. And, don't rule this out, she might join up with this Cornell West clown and do that no-labels party to try to get 10% of the vote or 15% of the vote. That would ensure a Biden victory. Does she hate Donald Trump that bad, the man who made her what she was? Does she hate him that bad? Does she resent him that bad? Yes, she would. You need to, you need to understand what you're dealing with here, folks. And these women, oh, I love Nikki Haley. And why had why did the deep state do what they done to Donald Trump. They had a Wisconsin panel the other night on CNN, and the, the only Asian American, middle-aged man, pretty sure he was an engineer, so he's a smart guy, and he said, I will not vote for Donald Trump if he's convicted of a crime. So now you know why they got these ridiculous charges thrown against Donald Trump. If one of them sticks, people like that engineer are not going to vote for Donald Trump. The deep state's done his job. They unfairly and horribly targeted Donald Trump. This reminds me of Salem Witch Trial of 1692. It makes shit up that the lady had a land over there. They wanted that land. Oh, she's a witch. I saw her curl her eyes. Her, her hair stood straight up. and I saw that lightning hit her hair. You know, and, and they burned the witch to the stake in 1692. Look it up. The Salem witch trials. That's what this is. When Trump says it's a total witch hunt, he's correct. But I'm closing this video. It's too long now. I'm here to tell you that Nikki Haley has lost all my respect. I can't stand her. And her hero is Hillary Clinton by her own words. Her hero is Hillary Rodden Clinton. By her own words, you need to get a clue, people. And for those of you who voted for her, shame on you. You voted against your country. Do you think she cares about this country? She cares about Nikki Haley. Oh, Donald Trump cares about himself, no, does he? Why did he take the $400,000 a year salary as president for four years? He gave it to military charities and other charities. 
Oh, by the way, the, the VP pick, it will not be one of the 13 people that rose out of the ashes to oppose the apparent front runner. I know Donald Trump pretty well. I'm going to bet big money that he won't pick any of these 13 people that oppose him, including Vivian Ramaswamy. He might give him the cabinet position to shut him up and keep him, you know, keep him at bay, like FDR did Joe P. Kennedy. He made Joe Kennedy the ambassador of the United Kingdom to get him out of his hair. And uh, he knew he was going to be grifted with the you know, British industrials, but he didn't care. Because Joe Kennedy wanted that job. He wanted to be president. His son became president and he got assassinated. So think about that, too. I'm here to tell you that this politics is nasty business. That's why my wife and my mom else hate politics. Because it's a dirty, dirty business. I mean, this is worse than watching The Godfather. Really? You're going to let these criminals come here and try to attack the president because you don't like him and he, he's going to make you stop spending money? Really? But that's what we're up against, folks. That's the reality of it. You know, there are 12 clans, including Vivian Ramaswamy, who I admire greatly. You know, why did he run? They're waiting for something to happen to Donald Trump. They've been told, Ron DeSantis, they were told, oh, don't worry, one way or another, we're going to get rid of this Donald Trump. You know? And uh, I'm telling you, that, and they're not done yet. The Democrats are not done yet. They're going to throw more stuff between now is eight months away until the election you watch. They'll come up with something else, and I'll talk about that. They are just hell-bent on destroying this one man, standing alone. The American people, we got to vote for Donald Trump. We have to support this man no matter what, and it's going to be up to us to get him back into power. And hopefully, this time, hopefully he'll do what I wanted him to do last time, clean house. I mean, mass firings, blanket firings, whole departments chopped off. We don't need them anyway. When I was working for government, everybody voted Republican. You know, we appreciated our government. We appreciated our system. But you know, two generations later, not that way, folks. They want to keep those jobs, those government, do nothing government jobs. And I used to work government, I could say that. I'm 18 and a half years in civil service myself. Always great to be an American. Go Donald Trump, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.